You have become the first person ever to swim the length of the English Channel not so long ago. 330 miles uh, in just speedos and goggles. I will ask quite simply, why? Yes, uh, I mean, I asked that question to myself many, many times during the, the 49 day swim. Uh, I've been now swimming for 30 years. I've, uh, I've swum in every ocean of the world and I've seen such enormous changes in our oceans. So I wanted to do a swim which would highlight exactly what is happening in our oceans. And I could think of no better place than the English Channel, which is the home of swimming. It's an incredible cause you've, you've taken up. Uh, talk to us a little bit, if you can, about the reaction to, to your swim. What was the public's reaction to that? Oh, it, it, it was really overwhelming. So, I mean, we, we went to a number of big cities, you know, Plymouth and Portsmouth and Brighton. But also along the way, we went to lots of small towns you know, Dartmouth and Penzance and, 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 and Hastings and many others, uh, too many to mention. And the public, they came out in their droves it, uh, to wish me well and to, and to support me and also to be saying to their local MPs, really, now's the time for, for action. Not only did I have the support from, from ordinary members of the public, but also politicians came down. Michael Gove, the Environment Secretary, he came down to the end. And there's also been an overwhelming response also from business. Um, before the expedition, it was very, very difficult to get a sponsor for something like this. I mean, it's a very public campaign and it's, it's a hard-hitting campaign. I was very, very fortunate to have FXTM, uh, a forex trading company, to, to sponsor me. But prior to this, it was really, really difficult to get the support. And now I'm getting emails from companies all over the United Kingdom and further afield saying, we want to get involved in this as as part of our uh, contribution to protecting the environment. And what can you tell us, Lewis, about the, the current state of the sea? Having swum in so many of the world's oceans, w what is the current state of the ocean? Yeah, be under no illusions that our oceans now are, are in absolute crisis. Uh, they're polluted, they're very, very badly overfished, and the scale of the problem is, is growing. And it's now a race against time to actually protect them. So this swim, which I did, I was at sea for, for 50 days, and over those 50 days, I saw lots of jellyfish, which are a sign of the warming waters and the overfishing. I saw lots of jellyfish. I saw a few birds. I saw a few fish. I saw a few dolphins. And I saw one turtle and very little else. It's, it's a sign of what is happening to our oceans. And I saw lots and lots of plastic. So yeah. plastic now is endemic all over our oceans. It seems like a problem that is insurmountable and irreversible, but... What can people do? What's your message to people who want to help, want to contribute to this issue? What can ordinary people do? Well, it's the very first thing we can do is to reject single-use plastic. The idea that you would use something once and then never, ever again, and, it could, and it's then in the environment for hundreds and hundreds of years to pollute the environment. I mean, it's, it's a, we just we cannot have... Uh, we don't have a single-use plastic, so there's no place now in modern society for single-use uh, plastic. Uh, I would also urge people to do beach cleanups. Uh, when you go down to the beach and you see what's happening, then you become part of the solution. And also, retailers play such an important role. Uh, wherever I am, all over the world, I just see so much plastic being used by, by retailers and by manufacturers. It can't always be the consumer's responsibility. They also need to play their part. You've swum across the, the, the hippo-infested waters of Lake Malawi. You've swum around Robben Island as well, which I know is one of, the, one of the great white shark capitals of the world. What's been your scariest swim? Um, I did a swim down in Antarctica um, in a place called the Ross Sea. Now, if you just explain where the Ross Sea is, it's the most southern body of water in the world. It's right on the edge of Antarctica. So if you, if you sail from the bottom of New Zealand from 40 degrees south to 50 to 60 to 70 to 78 degrees south, right as far south as you can sail. Eventually, you get to this place called the Ross Sea. It's an unbelievably beautiful place with emperor penguins and uh, um, humpback whales. and just It's just amazing. This place was being very, very badly uh, exploited by commercial fishermen. And I wanted to go down there to highlight what was happening and to try to get this area protected. The water temperature there was minus 1.7 and the air temperature wow. was minus 37. And I remember my wife being next to me in a boat and a small wave hit the side of her boat. And as the wave came up uh, out, of the, out of the sea, 
the spray turned into ice midair. And all I'm thinking is, well, I'm in this water. I pull my hand out of minus 1.7 degrees centigrade, and it goes and it's going into minus 37, so a drop of 35 degrees centigrade. I swam for 350 meters, and then I, 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 I thought, if I carry on any further in this water, I will not survive. I got out there, and uh, the, 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 the wonderful thing about it is that it then it gave me an opportunity then to begin the, to begin the discussion with the various countries which protect Antarctica, and the end result of that was that we were able to create a protected area which is the largest in the world. It's the size of Britain, France, Germany, Italy, all put together, but we need many more of them.